Greetings, everyone, to the We Are Gamers podcast. This is Lawrence from the We Are Gamers podcast, giving you our usually done intro by Justin, but Justin can't be with us right now, taking care of some personal um, personal things that he's going through right now. And right now, as a result, this is a three-person crew. So with me, I have Rydent. Hey, guys. And returning to the podcast is the lovely Team Benevolence, Michelle. Hello. Yay, we're reunited once more. <laughs> I miss you, Michelle. It was so lonely just dealing with these other guys. You may be put, you, you may be put up with Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may be put up with Ryden and Justin. <laughs> Feel bad for me. <laughs> oh, man. But... Before we go into the main point of discussion, which is the week before E3, uh, we just wanted to get some things out of the way in regards to what's been going on over on the UK side of the pond and how busy it's been for Michelle and Ryden and also one of the recent podcast episodes and what's going on on that front. So Ryden, if you want to take it away from here. Uh, Yeah, I am normally the one responsible for putting up the videos onto YouTube, but the video that was meant to have gone up from our last podcast hasn't gone up yet due to a few things that I've been doing, things like MCM and God knows how many other social and industry functions and whatnot. Um, but hopefully it should be up before this video. So if you want to check it out, I'll stick the link in the, uh, in the description and you should be able to hop backwards. Um, but this one should go up quite promptly, hopefully. All right, that should that should uh, should work out well. Our last episode was regarding the Xbox One, so <laughs> so all things considered, the, our last episode that was recorded will fit in nicely with the pre E three theme, considering that the announcements at E three pertain to the next generation of video gaming. Yeah. But before we get into that, um. I, we just want to talk about a little bit about what went on in the UK this last weekend, I believe, or two weeks ago. Right, uh, Michelle, you were both at the MCM Expo, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, how was everything over there? Was it a good time? What went down? Um, yeah, it was pretty good. It's like um, on the first day before MCM, uh, we went actually to the Zelda Symphony of the Goddess. So that was quite a good way to sort of kick off that weekend. Jealousy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here in America, and you can feel you can feel my jelly right now. <laughs> no, no, Michelle, were you one of these that had your 3DS with you and claiming God knows how many street passes while you were there? Yeah, that was a bit insane. <laughs> um, I think I completed about three or four puzzle panels, which is uh, insane. <laughs> Wow. Now, what are the most in regards to the most, most, people, well, most people I know have said that they, you know, they collected like two to three hundred or something ridiculous. I know it's like basically every time you'd open up, the green light would just keep flashing and flashing. It would like not stop because <laughs> we had um, seats quite high up on the stalls, so you could look down and all you could see was like a sea of like flashing screens. <laughs> because of all the PDSs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's in, that's insane. And oh, oh, of course, obviously, since this was a Zelda con- uh, symphony, excuse me, the music had to have been phenomenal. Oh, totally, totally. It's pretty much as good as Distant Worlds, to be honest. Ooh, that's pretty high praise. Yeah, I was invited. I, mean, I was I was invited to go out there, but um, one, I was working on the Thursday and getting out to London isn't always easy. Um, plus I, a lot to, you know, I had to kind of save up for, uh, the weekend at MCM, which was a big expense as Michelle knows too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So that, that was how you started your weekend with the symphony concert and going from there. And then you went from there, you went to MCM, right? Yeah, uh, that was a lot of fun as well. It's like um, uh, we were co- cosplaying as um, looking guy from Tales of the Abyss and also 
Uh, I was cosplaying Yukimura from Single Kabasara on the Sunday. So it was just so incredibly sort of busy and even on the Sundays. But it's still insane because people would still recognize us even though we were obviously, you know, from these really obscure sort of niche titles. And it was so bad because, I, like I said, I was cosplaying Yukimura on the Sunday. Apparently there was a really big group of Bizarre cosplayers on the Saturday, and I missed them. <laughs> this, this, this is typical, right? <laughs> I no. know, it's just like, there's like a, a Shingen cosplayer on the Saturday. And I was talking to this guy, one of the guy at one of the stalls, and he was just going on about how awesome it was to see Shingen, because you never see these cosplayers that often and I was so gutted because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I saw you on the um, on the Friday went because I, I um, worked on the Koei booth for uh, a lot of the weekend um, I was only really there on this on the Friday but I ended up doing the Sunday as well and I, I sort of hung around on the Saturday but when I bumped into you on the Friday there was someone that came up to you wanted to do a um, it was a Tales of uh, thingy, but I, I think that was for the Saturday. Yeah, because uh, there was a Tales of uh, photo shoot on the Saturday afternoon. So that was right. pretty much what you It was basically Tales of Saturday. <laughs> did, did you do Tales of as well on Saturday? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's cool. See, I, I did my very first cosplay on Saturday. And that was um, Pierre Dupont from Tomb Raider. Which was kind of a, a it's, you, you can weed out the the Tomb Raider fans from wearing that, uh, or, you know, some of the fans from wearing that because um, those really strong Tomb Raider fans got who I was straight away as soon as they saw me, um, and then you can kind of see. I, I guess not everyone played because I cosplayed the anniversary version of Pierre Dupont as opposed to the older style. Um, I guess people either maybe skipped anniversary or. Um, They'd never played. They'd never played the first, uh, first ones or the anniversary one. They'd kind of just played the most recent game, and uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, but during the the Tomb Raider panel with uh, Camilla Luddington, I had a few people um, notice me up there. So that was that was pretty cool. It can. It kind of became the Tomb Raider fan litmus test with the with yeah. the <laughs> yeah yeah. I mean, th- there was there were just so many, um, especially on the Saturday because Camilla had her panel then, and it was kind of the busiest day. There were a lot of Lara Crofts, um, like the recent look Lara Crofts, and there were a lot of um, Alex Vices as well. Um, Alex is the guy, uh, the techie guy with the. Um, the white and black, uh, white shirt, black sleeve, um, with the ESC um, button on the front of his T-shirt. Um, there were a few of those, so there wasn't really a lot of variety. But I've been tempted to do uh, Matthias for my next one, which should be cool. Okay. okay. So over so overall at the MCM Expo, um, I remember that you may were both, or was it just right that you were helping out the Tecmo Koei booth a little? Uh, that was just me. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I helped I helped them out on the um, on the Friday. Um, that was the day that I kind of booked to be doing it. Um, it was really really cool uh, chatting with people that are either long-term fans of the dynasty warriors series because we're you know showing off dynasty warriors 8 um the very first english build um being shown because they weren't initially going to show it until e3 so we we actually got the very first um build um and it was really cool talking with fans and seeing people that hadn't played this played it for a long time and get getting all excited about playing it and the kids were kids were fantastic um just i i'd stand that i stand uh, sort of at a bit of a distance watching them play and as soon as I see their Musu bars um, light up and flash I'd go up to them and just say uh, you know hit the uh, hit the circle button it was all on the PS3 I said hit the, hit the circle button and you'll do a really cool move and just see their faces light up as they do that was amazing wow <laughs> so you really got to see some newer you could say fans of the series get to get a chance to try out the games 
Yeah, um, I, the, the, the few people there who um, were fans before, um, or you know, or they may not have been strict fans, but they played the game before and you know had some enjoyment with it in the past, and kind of skipped under the uh, presumption that it's the same game all the time, um, like a lot of people do. Um, and I've actually, you know, they really enjoyed this one, so it's looking, you know, looking kind of positive. And I, you know, hopefully it, it, it can, you know, turns around and actually turns into sales and people actually becoming fans of the series. Okay, okay. So you're pretty much getting to see more of an exposure of the Warriors series as it comes out yeah. as it comes out on um, for Dynasty Warriors Eight with their new installment. So that's always pretty. That's always pretty good. Yeah. All right. And I, and I did like the English voices that they had in. You were you were a bit um, iffy with those, weren't you, Michelle? Like with some of the characters. Uh, no, I was quite happy with most of the English okay. voices, to be honest. It's, it's sort of good to have them back after sort of, <laughs> after, you know. <laughs> it feel, it feels like a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, because we had obviously we had we had them in Excel, but then obviously obviously Seven Empires, and then well, for me the Japanese and the, and version. Rochi, yeah. 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 All right. So it has, yeah, that's felt like a long time. Yeah. So it should it should be good to have at least the um, that functionality back at least for the dual voices, you know, for those yes. who want either or. Um, yeah. Curiously, were the voices in uh, the MCM Japanese or English? English. Eng- they oh. were, uh, they, they, there was not the option to have the Japanese voices there. Okay. Um. It was a P- it was a PS3 um, E3 build. The, the the point of the build was to actually show off the English voices, so they didn't have the Japanese voice option. Um, and it was um, the you had eight characters to choose from. Um, four of the new characters. I think there was um, Guan Yingping, uh, Yue Jin, uh, Lu Su, and uh, Simi Yi's wife, Lady. What's her face? I kept calling her Lady Tuna, but that's not her name. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. For uh, the new female character for Jin? Yes, yeah, Simi, Simi Yi's wife. Uh, Zhang Xunhua. Yeah, I kept calling her Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tuna with a CH. Um, <laughs> she, I, I didn't actually like playing her. Um... But I, I did like playing uh, Lusu. He's um, his his rake weapon's pretty cool. Um, I did enjoy playing uh, Guan Yingping with her new um, is it a, a weighted pole? Right. Um, and Yue Jin, he's very fast. Um, he doesn't, you know, he's not all that um, strong in his attack. So you know, the, but he's very very fast, and he's got. And each of the characters got three Musu attacks each, which is pretty cool. Right. Yeah, I've seen a uh, gameplay of UA Jin before, and he really does look like a speed demon in yes. Dynasty Warriors 8. Like, he looks like what Gan Ning used to be with his old Musou. Yeah. It, he was, it was really fun to play. Um, I mean, I played every single character that was available. Um... Uh, but I and I, I probably rank um, him and Lusu as my favourites from the new people there. Um, the most popular I saw while I was actually on the stand was um, Xiao Yun. He was very popular, even though he's been in the series for ages. Like people just always seem to pick him. Um, and uh, Xi Hao Dun, he was probably the second most popular, and then maybe uh, Yue Jian. And if anyone picked a female, it was usually Guan Yimping. Oh, nice. Okay. Zhao, Zhao Yun seems to have that broad appeal to him, it seems like. I mean, he's the poster yeah. boy of the series, but he also has that you know, that attachment, you could say, to the series and to the fan base. And that, oh, there's Zhao Yun. And he's always usually one of the more fun characters to play. Yeah. And he, he's, you know, he's, although he's got, um, he's got that long-reach weapon, and he is pretty fast as well, you know... And I, I think some of the moves he can pull off, um, 
using his um, his pole arm is uh, pretty cool. Um, and it, the, the 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 spear flexes um, and quite noticeably flexes when attacking, which is really really cool. Yeah, I, I noticed that in when they introduced that new style in DW Seven XL, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that they uh, that they decided to add that kind of realistic attribute to how his spear functions. Yes. So uh, overall, the demo that was there, I was impressed. So then it, seeing the same level all the time, I, I kind of wanted more, but that you know it was nice to have that option available. And we also ran the tournaments for KOs, which you didn't do, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I thought I bird about it now. I did really lame. I, I, I joined the, the competition on the Saturday, and I think I only got 600 and something. Um, it was uh, as many KOs in eight minutes. Um, the person who won, uh, like, who won overall... Because uh, there was two different comps, one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday. Um, he got a thousand and something. He played um, Xiao Yun, and basically just, I, I believe, he just spammed the um, the square button. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I and I can I can understand his tactic because um, doing a combo actually slows you down. Yeah. Because of the the, the combo finish times. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the combo start times. So um, as soon as you hit that heavy attack, you kind of slow the animation down, and you actually um, th- it seems that you're not going to get so many um, so many kills in that in that period of time. So I should have done that. I was a combo heavy person. I even did musu attacks, which obviously cost you. So lesson learned. Quicker attack gets more people out there, and eventually yeah. just built up his score. Was the it? only time he used the only time he used Musu was when he was hopping on a horse and um, used it to charge. Yeah, to, to the next later to the, not to kill people to charge to the next point. Right, the, that huge speed boost you get off the horse on uh, using yeah. it to Musu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes sense the the way he went about it. It's, so overall, you would say your weekends at the MCM Expo were entertaining, fun, great times overall? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Very nice. Okay, so with that all mentioned, now that we move from MCM to today, which today was the Konami pre-E3 conference, and on that conference, it didn't they didn't really have... A lot that wasn't, um, excuse me, that wasn't known in regards to what they were doing. The only thing that, the only two things that were really big in terms of announcements were the voice, the new voice for Snake in MGS5, and not Solid Snake, not (laughs) not Solid Snake. Just to clarify, the 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 character being voiced is Big Boss. If I am not mistaken, it said stated that the game takes place in 1989, so Snake would be 49 years old, which would mean that this is Big Boss era. Oh, excuse, uh, excuse me, 1984, and Snake is 49 years old. So this would be Big Boss that you will be playing as in the next Metal Gear Solid. And the voice actor, in a somewhat surprise move, it's not David Hayter, as we've known for a while in regards to his the voice being heard in the original trailer, but the voice actor is the star of 24, Kiefer Sutherland. Meh. <laughs> um, I don't know what to think. <laughs> The, the, I mean, there's been a lot of negative fan backlash on that. Um, I mean, I'm not going to completely dis. I mean, I don't. I'm not particularly that keen on that decision, but I'm not going to completely disregard him either. Uh, in the in the basis that once I hear him in the game, I might actually grow to like him as that as the character. Right. Um, it will feel different. I know. I, I can understand that that's going to be the case, but then. You know, Big Boss was different in Metal Gear Solid 4, but don't really kind. Of, many many people don't kind of pick that up. Um, 
So I'm not going to be too negative towards him right now. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not that keen on it, the decision being that way. It would have been nicer to have um, a voice actor as opposed to someone from the acting cast. Um, but you guys were saying it was to do with um, the fate of the animation capture and stuff like that as well. Hmm. Right. Kojima stated that he wanted someone who could give a more subdued performance that is more expressed through the facial movements and his tone of voice rather than just words. And he wanted someone who could portray the facial and vocal qualities of a man in his late 40s, since Snake is obviously now 49 years old. So he went for... Um, he asked a friend of his, I think Avi Arad or Avi Arad, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so forgive me on that. But he asked him if he had any contacts, and he, he recommended Kiefer Sutherland, and Kojima immediately jumped for it. So it's kind of, hmm, I, I don't know. It, it's, I'm t- I'm torn on it. Because it almost sounds kind of backhanded to say that David Hayter couldn't provide that performance. Yeah. Especially since David Hayter is 44. <laughs> He's, um... You, 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 you never guess what, but David Hayter is actually getting older as the series getting older. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and Kiefer Sutherland is only two years older than David Hayter. You know, if, if the whole point was age, you know, have an older, more subdued performance... I'm pretty sure David Hayter could give that if you asked him. And yeah. he is only, again, two years younger than Kiefer Sutherland. 44 to 46. It's so, uh, it's just kind of, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. I, I, at the first onset of someone other than Hayter voicing Big Boss, I was fine with it. Because mm-hmm. Richard Doyle voiced Big Boss in MGS4. So there yeah. had to have been some vocal change. To, to take place what bugged me more was when it got explained as the reasoning as to why and who it was because it's, it's again it seems almost backhanded like you say you wanted a more subdued performance that can be told through facial expressions and everything and well your your previous actor is just about the same age. Why didn't you keep him? Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he could give a more subdued performance if asked of him. David Hayter. And he... Hello? You did get me there, right? Uh, no, I did not, actually. It actually kind of oh, uh, gave um, a problem with a call pop up there. Technical oh. difficulties on the podcast. <laughs> we love them. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, yeah well, I was saying, because uh, David Hayter was actually disappointed you know, that he wasn't cast in. Um, and it would have been nice to at least have acknowledged or try to work something out with him. Yeah. But they don't do that in Japan. <laughs> do they do what in Japan? Well, they obviously don't do, you know, they, they seem to do everything uh, not as we would expect it to be done over here. So I think the thing with Japan is that they have a huger, uh, a much larger talent pool of voice actors to pick from. So they don't yeah. go for the celebrity so much I, I i guess i guess as um as um kojima's being more and more exposed as a tv and film buff um it's probably influenced his decision to like to go this way as well maybe kojima's always been more western minded yes but would a, would a Westerner buy a Metal Gear Solid game for Kiefer Sutherland, or would they buy it because it's called Metal Gear Solid? You know, I, I would mean, say more likely because it's called Metal Gear Solid. But you may have people, you know, you may have some people who have just you just kind of s- stumble upon the series at this point, and 
um because because each of the games really can be played separately they tie in together but they don't have to be played together um you know you don't really have to have knowledge of one before you can play another um so people might just stumble in on this new game right right it, but i don't know it's it just it they won't be that they won't be the fans that be upset by the change in voice right uh, michelle what do you think of uh this whole situation it just i don't know i think it's really kind of iffy how they sort of didn't even try to work anything out with david considering you know to a lot of people, he is Snake. You know, mm-hmm. either, well, both of the well, both snakes. And it's just, I don't know, Kiefer Sutherland, really? <laughs> he was a bit of a strange character, a bit of a strange guy to, the, you know, when this was all kind of coming about, the fact that, the, you know, the, the voice actor was going to be announced. I was just kind of, that was kind of a, 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 you know, a surprise. I wouldn't have considered him at all. Yeah. I mean, there's always the possibility that Hater, you know, is participating willingly in this long, uh, you know, little elaborate, I guess you could say troll attempt. With I was going to say, the, I was going to say troll. <laughs> yeah, there's always that possibility, but it, yeah. I don't know. Because remember, Kojima's done something similar with this, you know, with the whole thing with Raiden. Yeah. It, it, you just never know with Kojima nowadays, but it just seems too elaborate this time. That, you know. <laughs> this, is, this is when we find out that um, uh, Kiefer Sutherland has only uh, done the animation and the actual voice actor is <laughs> is David <Hayden. laughs> right because <laughs> David because uh, <laughs> David Hater posted on his Twitter uh, at David B Hater on uh, his Twitter page he says after the announcement oh well can't fault at real Kiefer great act good man the game will probably still be excellent like new coke <laughs> now the, for anyone who doesn't understand the reference in i think it was the 80s i believe coca-cola tried to change their formula and everyone loved the original formula so coca-cola tried to change their formula to something different to give a new flavor to it and they branded it new coke this flavor did they not... added a secret vegetable no not not even that one. It's just that this flavor was v- viewed as so horrible that people were boycotting Coca-Cola for the new flavor. And they wanted the old flavor back. So, his reference of the game will still probably be excellent like new Coke can be taken as a, you know, somewhat of a slight jab at the decision. So, so, so bad that everyone wants the old one back. Right. Basically, yeah. that was how new. Co- that's how new Coke is perceived. It, 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 that when they tried to change the formula, everyone wanted the old formula back. So David Hater's it's, it's, tweet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like when uh, when our Cadbury's company got take got taken over by Kraft, the American company, and now it tastes like American chocolate. So it's not the same. Right, different region, different flavor. But we we're, we're not you know we're not going to get our our Cadbury's back. Yeah. I'm sad facing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot set <laughs> hard. <laughs> so, let's see. But yeah, there's always that possibility. And there's also the possibility that that Kiefer Sutherland could like you like you said, he could just be doing the facial expressions and everything. And while he might be doing the voice for the trailers, it could all just be one elaborate, you know, spin. Yeah, but you know, even if it's not, I'm you know I will give I'll give it a try, um, and I may be completely stunned by this you know the performance that he actually puts on and actually grow to like him. Yeah, that's in this game. So, you know, I, I I won't put a completely negative spin on it. Um, change people don't like change. That's one thing. Oh yeah, that's always uh, that's always a certain thing, but it, it's just the the general con- uh, perception of it. It just seems so back like I've said before, backhanded for Kojima yeah. to say, "Well, we wanted a more subtle, subdued performance from an actor who can portray someone being forty nine. 
Well, he was only two years older than Hater. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the first part of first big part of Konami's uh, pre E three coverage. The second big part was the Castlevania Lords of Shadow two trailer that they showed during the conference. Now, for those of you who play Castlevania Lords of Shadow one, the game's going to pick up right from the epilogue of the first Lords of Shadows. And the way the game looks right now is fantastic. It looks amazing that they're actually fixing some of, a lot of the problems that people ha may have had with the first game. They're fixing the camera so now the, the player can control the camera all the way. You know, full 360 degree movement and the camera starts behind the player. They're fixing the combat to be more tactical and more engaging. They're making it so that you can go from area to area in a non-level based format. So it's more of an open world. You know, kind of like an old style meets new style Castlevania. In the, in the sense that the older games let you explore the whole castle as it opened up and then you can go from place to place as you wanted. So now they're kind of fusing the old and the new style Castlevania from it. And also you now have the concept that they're playing along with as, since this takes place or during the epilogue of Lords of Shadows. Um, I guess I guess best way we could do it now is give a little spoiler warning for those who may not have played the original Castlevania Lords of Shadows that... Like me. Um, <laughs> it's alright, it's, it's fine. Uh, see, see, for me, I, you, you, you can tell me this and I will forget it before it, it, I even start to play it. So. Go ahead. Alright, fair enough. But for anyone else who doesn't want to be spoiled of Lords of Shadow 1 content, then what we'll be talking about regards to Lords of Shadow 2, and by default it will spoil some of the ending, or a good portion of the ending, actually, of Lords of Shadow 1, so you're, you are now warned. With the spoiler warning out of the way, um, with Lords of Shadow 2, it takes place at the end of Lords of Shadow 1, with the whole epilogue sequence. And in that epilogue sequence, we see... Uh, Gabriel Belmont, who's now become Dracula, in a modern city. So, Lords of Shadow 2 is going to allow us to play as this Dracula in a modern setting. And they're trying to give a new focus on the whole open world aspect of it now. That you'll be this, you know, you could say this denizen of evil, basically, roaming through the city. And from there, you have to go through the different objectives the different missions that they'll pop up throughout the game and you know they didn't really give many details on how the open world will function as it was mostly kind of a cinematic looking trailer than anything but they really just wanted to talk about how the game will be open world with no low times now and how the game will take place from the epilogue of lords of shadow one so those were the two big things for the lords of shadow two um trailer as well as the announcement of the release date being winter 2013 for lords of shadow 2's release and it will be current gen lords of shadow 2 for those wondering so it will be a ps3 xbox 360 title which means you can't play it on your ps4 or um xbox one because there's no backwards compatibility right <laughs> These, although ps4 is trying to do something with cloud so i want to see where they're going with that but xbox one no yeah Xbox One, um, let's not revisit that just yet. <laughs> but, yeah, it's being released for the current gen consoles and it will be due out winter 2013. <coughs> the trailer was a pretty cinematic tra looking trailer. It was very nicely done, very nicely put together. For those who may not have seen it, I would recommend giving it a look on Konami's YouTube channel when they post it up. Or if you... Uh, if you can try to catch it on the E3, uh, excuse me, the pre E3 conference stream from GameSpot, as they have the whole conference up on their side. I will try and pop it up on the Tumblr. Okay, that'll work. In actual fact, I'm doing that now. Nice. So yeah, you can view it on our Tumblr page. There you go. So for easier access, just pop on on our Tumblr and you'll find the YouTube video for the Lords of Shadow 2 trailer. Cool. So, with that being the first shot of E3 coming our way, 
um, what do you guys think we should expect, uh, should expect from E3 itself between different rumors, or what are you most looking forward to? Um, now, while I have put up a lot of the Tech by Koei stuff, uh, it looks like we are getting uh, Toikoden over here. Uh, which does look really cool. I, I posted up a few, uh, quite a bit about that today. Um, we there's also I think um, Atelier Meruru, the um, yeah. which is now getting a plus version uh, on the PS Vita. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Square Enix have in mind. Um, I'd like to see what they've got both for Western titles and um, what they're doing with the Final Fantasy franchise. Hopefully some info on the what was Final Fantasy versus 13. Um, it, would just be, it would just be an update telling us there's an update, <laughs> that they're still working yeah. on it. Yeah. Like they've been doing for like the past seven years now. <laughs> um, I mean, there's you know the speculation on that now that it's going to be a next gen title. Um, I think because they've expanded the the thirteen world with um, lightning story etc. Um, it probably wouldn't still be called versus thirteen, so they may take it somewhere else and uh, rebrand it under a different number. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of like to see what they're doing there. There are rumours about a um, Legacy of Cain game. Um, apparently a domain has been registered, so I'll be interested to know about that. I'd if, love to see a new Legacy of Cain. I, I mean, I, I can understand that um, certain things won't be the same. Um, we won't have the voice of the Elder God because um, he passed away. Mm-hmm. Um... We won't have the storytelling by Amy Hennig because she now works with um, Naughty Dog, and she's the one that wrote the stories for the, all the Legacy of, game, of Kane games previously. Right, but is she a writer for Naughty Dog, or is she more of yes. like a freelance? Oh, okay. She, she, no, she, she, she is part of the Naughty, like core Naughty Dog team. So okay, that that that'll explain it then. Um. So yeah, so we won't see stuff from her, but you know, the, let's not ignore it. You know, it could it could be a good game. It may be nice to see a refreshing take on this series from someone else's perspective. You know, as long as they keep because the games have been very um, law based. Um, you know, with things that have gone on in Nosgarth, and um, they've been very well connected with the same characters through different times um, when Mobius has taken uh, Raziel or um, Kane through the time streams, etc. Um, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see where it goes um, from where it left off in Defiance if they take it forward or they could take it backwards. I mean, that this is all speculation on the fact that they may announce something. <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I can't say that they have. Um yeah. Maybe interested to see what other Western titles may be announced. Oh, you know, although there has been issues with their Western titles, especially on marketing budgets, etc. Um, but it'd be nice to see what you know what they've got planned for the future. Um, I'm trying to think, who else is who else is there? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. Um, when it comes to things like EA and stuff, there's probably going to be stuff which uh, sparks little, like huge interest. There's nothing going to be spark huge interest unless, of course, there's something on Mirror's Edge two, which maybe will. Um, but most of their announcements are kind of subpar for me. If they're you know announcing something on the battlefield or uh, first person shooter perspective <clears throat> that's kind of mediocre grounds for me it's not dead exciting right um, and I have no interest in sports games so 
Yeah, that that's it's been it's a sticking point for some people lately. The focus on the yearly franchises in the sports games and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So like I understand that. Um, what are you looking forward to, Michelle? I'm looking forward to seeing how much of a train wreck Square can make this. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's so many rumors coming out of Square Enix's side right now. There's the Versus 13 rumor, there's the FF15 rumor, and there's even been a rumor, possible maybe, of a Kingdom Hearts 3 for the next gen. Yeah, yeah. So they have a shot of making this work, but that being said, it's all rumor and speculation. <laughs> so it could it could be very good or very bad. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't sort of help that they just announced that sort of they're delaying Lightning Returns here till February. Yeah, that 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 oh, yeah. kind of that, that that was a bit of a bit of a blow, really. Because I remember dealing with the press about it wasn't it meant to come in August? Uh, I think it just said uh, autumn. There wasn't a sort of or fixed autumn. date for it. Okay. But yeah, but got then of, massively but then of course. Type. Japan's getting in November, so <laughs> with that massive uh, box set. Yeah, if I, any of I you saw, guys saw that. I saw a picture of that box set. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. It's pretty cool. It, it does it does look pretty. It's, it's very well. It's very nicely presented. I, I'd say that. Um, but for all people that have got the first games. They may be a little a little disappointed because they, it does contain uh, Final Fantasy Thirteen, Final Fantasy Thirteen Two, and Lightning Returns. So, but perfect for a collector, right? I, I don't know. I'm I like the new trailer for Lightning Returns. It shows more of the gameplay. It shows more of the combat and call some yes. of the. You could say some of the thoughts of how the combat's going to work. It looks more, you know, real time. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I just can't. I just can't find myself grabbed by Lightning Returns. I, I, it could be the FF13 universe itself, but I just can't find myself intrigued. It could do what the 13 series has done to me so far, where I will buy it, like the sucker I am for Final Fantasy games. <laughs> and uh, not get around to playing it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would. <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm more looking forward to sort of ten and ten two HD, but we haven't got a release date for that either. So, <sighs> um, I believe we do November. Ooh, uh, wow. Yes. Really? When I was have, that? That's... I will have. I will have to. I will have to check. I would have to check that info. Uh, but I am pretty sure it was November or December. Hmm. I remember um, December being a rumored release date. I remember that. Mhm. So it's, it's possible. I, I'll I'm, dig up the info right now. I'm definitely interested to see where they go with the HD uh, release, just for if they're going to include the international edition stuff. Um, you know, how far are they going? Are they going with the HD remaster? But from the screenshots alone, the HD remaster looks amazing. Yes, I, I think it, I think it was confirmed that it's going to be the international version of Ten, but it is. they're still debating on whether they're going to include a uh, last mission for Ten Two. Uh, I believe that's. Meant to be in there. Uh, oh, where have we got it? Product information. No, it still says on here TBC. I'm in the Square Enix site. Yeah, my. Okay. So TBC. Okay, I dug up a uh, uh, a picture that we could also probably pop in on our Tumblr. To mm-hmm. compare, since we're talking about FF10 HD, that compares the two versions pretty much back to back, to see how much of a huge graphical difference it is. 
and it really puts a it really puts a spotlight on how much work went into this HD collection. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing 10 and 10 2 in HD, especially with, like I said, the screenshots that were already shown and how it already looks. And I I don't know. I want to see how Square Enix does with this E3. I, I'm curious if they could live up to this hype that they that they have built due to the rumors and everything. I I think one of the most interesting things with the um, the ten and ten two thing is for those people who have got a PS Vita, being able to play on the PS Vita like Final Fantasy ten on the PS Vita would just be amazing. Oh yeah, that would ease that would easily be a great uh, a great little you could say perk of being a Vita owner. You could be, play you could play what was a console game on a yeah. handheld. Now this is another thing I'm quite looking forward to. Hope you know maybe getting announced at E3, and that's a, a Vita price drop, mm. or even maybe a new model, which could then spark a Vita price drop for the older model. Mm, I, that could because that could work. because Sony have Sony have that thing where they, you know, they use this kind of marketing model, don't they? That this um product life cycle model where they will announce a new version of um, an existing console yeah. including the handhelds and not always in that longer period of, you know that longer space of time so okay the vita the vita's always been a console to me that's been overlooked but that's because of its lack of to an extent, its lack of support. Yes. It's a, it's a great console. It just never got the support it needed to thrive. Supposedly going forward, there's a po- um, Sony are putting in that games released on the PS... I think it's games released on the PS4 or games released on the PS Vita will need to have remote support. Uh, yes, I believe games released on the PS4 will be built in to allow remote support. Yeah. Yes. Which will kind of in, um, entice, uh, possibly entice a few more people to maybe buying into the Vita, especially if it does have a price drop. Mm-hmm. Definitely. The price, if they do a price drop along with the remote play support, and they ke- they continue doing the cross-play functionality with the PS4 onto the Vita... Mm-hmm. Into the issue, yeah, into the next gen, then that would be a nice boon and a nice little small pocket market for the for the Vita to pick up from. I, now I was I was very tempted to buy. Uh, didn't really have the disposable funds. I bought my Elgato instead, uh, but I was right. very tempted to buy a Vita. Uh, one of our retailers was selling um, Vitas for uh, over a short period of time for a hundred pounds. Oh wow, which is a very good deal. I I, I think they they're possibly they, you know they're possibly pre-owned, um, but for a hundred pounds for the Wi-Fi model, it was pretty good. Um, I was very tempted, but I took what I wanted. I, I bought the Elgato to obviously increase content on our page and and share some of my experiences with the community and things. So, and I think I made a wise choice. Yeah, it probably in that in that regard. Although I personally, with the Vita, you couldn't have gone wrong either way. <laughs> yeah. it, it, for the Vita, because of things like um, Tokiden, which um, are on Tecmo Koei's um, E3 schedule, that's one game which I've been talking about a lot. And while I don't have any access to play on it. I am really excited to wanting to play it because it just looks so good. Right. Any other uh, titles you, any of you, might be looking forward to with, with the E3 especially coming up? Any surprises, maybe? Um. Now, Capcom have been not. They haven't been too loud about what they're going to be bringing out, have they? No. Um, the only thing. But, they, mm-hmm. 
And neither have Ubisoft. The only thing Capcom has teased is that they have a big surprise coming to E3. Yeah, and so, so there we go. Yeah, and I'm curious about what it might be because of the report that I believe... Um, I believe the team name is called Team Spooky from the right. fighting game community. They're going to be streaming at E3. So the fact that a fighting game group is going to be streaming at E3 at Capcom's booth mm-hmm. means that this could be something fighting game related. Yep. So do you think it could be maybe you know, that long sought after Darkstalkers? I was going to... Uh, that, that was the first thing that came to my mind was um, they could... You know, they released that HD collection of... Uh, it was a collection, wasn't it? It had the three games for Darkstalkers on the Xbox Live Arcade and PSN. Right. Um, as, I guess, a little tester to, you know, um, see if, you know, to see if they have another Darkstalkers, which looks a little closer to the Street Fighter 4 style graphics or something. It would be quite interesting. Yeah. I could see it working, but I'd personally prefer if they went the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 graphical route. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the Street Fighter 4 style, but there are some parts of it where it's just kind of like... Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, by that I mean having that, uh, what they call 2.5D yeah. style. Right, I get you now. Um, there's also one thing that might I'm not sure if this will be shown at E3. I know one game of the series will be shown at E3, but there's also this part that might have Michelle happy, and that's the one, not only Tales of Exilia uh, being shown more at E3, but also the announcement of the Tales of Symphonia Chronicles collection. Ah, in yes. HD. Yes. You think maybe we'll be seeing some of that at, uh, at E3? Oh, I totally hope so, anyway. You have you played the original Symphonia? Um, uh, yeah, it's quite funny because I I just bought it like a uh, expo weekend, and like <laughs> the week after it was when they announced it. <laughs> <laughs> hey Michelle, like, you know that oh. Michelle, you know that game you bought. <laughs> Here it is again in HD. <laughs> wow. Oh man, was it expensive? Because um, it's quite rare, isn't it? I think I paid about thirty pounds for it, so it was pretty Wait. much a bargain, to be honest. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's not not so bad. It's but it's still gonna eat into your wallet having a double dip for it if you opt to get the Chronicles. Well, well I, guess, I, I actually, guess there's a bit of time between the two. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like uh, the Japanese version comes out in October, to- I believe. Yes. Japanese and version is October. It's like uh, on Namco's sort of official Japanese, own, well, Japan only website. They're doing a special edition version, and oh. um, yeah, I've already pre-ordered that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> why must why must you always go for the shiny things? <laughs> it's it's because it's because she likes um she likes the customs and excise place so much. <laughs> oh, they they love me even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh it's her again <laughs> oh the one who buys all the limited edition stuff yeah we already got that set on the side just yeah. just pay the 80 pounds <laughs> uh, do you want to know something really bizarre it's like um i actually bought a wig from someone in america and i thought it will arrive in plenty of time for mcm um not only did it arrive after mcm but i got charged vat on it on a wig really yeah. What? <laughs> oh man. How, how much? <laughs> see, see, normally these charges. Okay. Um. I I can kind of understand the VAT. I guess it's more so the customs, the extra customs charges they usually get put on if the value is over so much. But damn. <laughs> but it's wow. like, warriors are actually free. Yeah. I got no problems. Like, I didn't get charged anything for it. And I get charged £12 to import a wig. It, it just, there's, like, no logic. 
Hey, they, that they extra, didn't like you. That extra weight, you know, all that fabric. <laughs> and all the and all the hair. And everything. It, it it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> Which makes it ironic because it's actually a short wig. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, now I'm lost. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, delivery services. Britain, we love you. <laughs> delivery no, services tax... in general. Mm-hmm. The tax man loves me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So... Uh... I can't get over that. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm thinking how you get charged for the wig. <laughs> for the shipping of the wig. But... Another company which hasn't really... Namco is another company that hasn't really spoken too much about what they've got planned. Right, I, w- I was just about to mention them off of the Tales of uh, point. Yeah, yeah, they've been quiet lately in regards to uh, E3. Yeah. I, I mean, apparently there was this big episode over at Capcom where um, Katsuhiro Hiro, uh, Harada went reportedly missing for a week. <laughs> and... Yeah, I, I, I remember Michael, um, his, trans, his translator, and I, I believe he's marketing as well, whatever. He, people were asking him where uh, Harada had gone. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Har- <laughs> Harada's not dead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Harada had apparently just disappeared, and all of a sudden he pops up on Twitter and goes, wait, this turned into news? <laughs> and, he said, and he said he'll be at E3, so he probably has something right. that might be... Now, there has, then there has been um, a few sneaky screen um, shots of Tekken versus um, Street Fighter, St- Tekken X Street Fighter... Um, posted up on the internet. The legitimacy of some of these, you never know. Um, I think one of them was Guile that was posted up. The 3D model of Guile. Oh, um, oh. So it possibly has, could be related to that if he's there. Mm, possibly, yeah. Because he said he wasn't going to be putting out another Tekken until they'd done that, I believe. Right. So... But- it's just that the thing is, there's also the, um, in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, some of them were also in the game as kind of, not guess, but as a little, you know, Easter egg. Yeah. So, you know, it could also have to do with that. Because you, know, you could make, like, a Ryu, Ken, and Akuma using uh, certain customization colors and outfits. Yep. So, you never know. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to know what what Namco have planned, um, especially for their more Japanese style titles. I'd say um, I'm not, you know, not been all that keen on a lot of their Western style titles that they've put out. You know, things like their Ace Combat and stuff like that, which haven't really sparked much interest. <laughs> yeah, I used to like the Ace Combat games as well. Um, just now it's not my game. Yeah. It used to be. It used to, it used to be a nice series, but for some reason just felt like it uh, fell off. And games like that are the reason I went into, when, when I was first playing, until maybe about a year ago, playing first-person shooters, and I would invert the Y-axis because of playing games like that. Oh, it got you into that habit, basically. Anyone I know that inverts the y, um, the y axis has usually had a background where they played um, these kind of space combat or air combat games. Right. So that's kind of where that that came from. But now I'm uh, I've, I I don't know what happened. Maybe someone threw a brick at my head. But now I can't play inverted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, it's like wait, I got so used to this, but now I can't use this style anymore. Yeah. What? But because my Xbox is still set, I, I need to change the settings, but it's still set to 
automatically invert the y-axis on get on first-person shooter games. Right. Or any shooter game, actually, because it also does it on third-person. So now, I, it, like, every time I have to make sure that I turn that setting off. <laughs> uh, who else? Um, I mean, so Konami's kind of touched on what they're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, Ubisoft. Now, they'll probably talk a little bit about their current-gen titles. Um, obviously, they'll probably put something out about Rayman, um, especially to please the the Wii uh, U owners and stuff. Um, although it's coming out multi, you know, on all, all gen on all current gen consoles, but um, they'll probably put something out to a, like to ease the, the, the strain from the uh, Wii U fans that got shunned <laughs> in a way. Yeah, and now they're doing Nintendo Direct. Um... Yeah conferences to lead up to it and i believe the first smash brothers trailer for the wii uh yeah i believe the wii u and the 3ds will be shown at their nintendo direct conference leading into e3 on the 11th isn't it i believe so yes um but ubisoft to also have i mean they've got black flag for assassin's creed um they have splinter cell which I'm sure they've got, uh, they've probably got E3 trailers for. They've got Watch Dogs, which they'll probably show a bit more of, especially the next gen stuff. Mm-hmm. That's the ti- that's one title I'm actually looking uh, looking at a lot because um, it looks it does look interesting. Yeah, I believe Watch Dogs stole the show when it was announced last year. Yes. So it'll be yes. interesting to see if they can show more of it now with not only the next gen technology. But also, as we come closer and closer to the game actually being made, yeah, to actually display more of the game in action, outside of that just that brief uh, little clip of it, and then we also have yeah. the Assassin's Creed Four, yeah, the Black Flag, yeah, right, with that being also next gen, as well. Maybe we get to also see more of the next gen technology behind it now that the next gen is officially announced and yeah. set and ready to go. <clears throat> One one thing next gen that I right now I don't really care about is what the PlayStation Four console looks like. <laughs> I kind of don't care. I, I'm uh, interested just to see how where they're going to go with this design, but other than that, it's meh. Well, the fact that when they silhouetted when when they had that silhouette there, um, it looked like it stood up um, stood upright. That. Uh, if, if if it does sit upright, that pleases me because my consoles have to sit upright. Unfortunately, the Xbox One doesn't, which is a disappointment for me. Oh wait, the Xbox One can't sit upright? Nope, nope. Oh, that is that's weird. Cons- the Xbox 360 was able to, and all of the last yes. gen consoles. I, I, as well. I'm not sure if it's something to do with if it's something to do with that connect or what. I don't know. I uh, or or. I don't know. I, I don't know what the issue is, but apparently it's got always got to be. It's set to be as it is, laying flat, so horizontal. Okay. Um, I'd be interested to know what more Sony has to say about the new console. I'm sure there's still, you know, there is still a lot of unanswered questions. I know Microsoft are getting a lot of uh, a lot of stick right now uh, because of their abysmal um, Xbox One conference that we covered over last time. Um, but I'm sure Sony still have a few unanswered questions, especially when it comes to things like uh, that people actually want to know about used games and all of that kind of thing. Right. Maybe they can give a clearer answer to settle yes. some of the debate and go from there. Yeah. Um, I think we were discussing just before the podcast about Microsoft and their sudden decision not to do the, uh, what, was, what did you call it, the round table uh, with, pub, with the... Um, uh, media. Right. They made the decision not to do not only the round table discussion with the media, but they also made the decision to cancel their one on one interviews, which strikes me as so strange. Which is probably the worst decision they could make right now because people are, have already lost so much confidence in them after that, um, that announcement that um, they were looking forward to this 
for the media to give them some further answers because it was through the media um, bits after the announcement that all this other information started creeping out. Yeah. And so to it's... not so to not include that is, and, and, and unless of course they approach those unanswered questions in their talk, they're not doing themselves any favors. Yeah, and by not having any questions to, or excuse me, not fielding any questions in exclusive one-on-one interviews or anything like that. Yeah, it it just, I think it's because the last time they did that resulted in the Xbox One issue that we have already. Yeah, with with people with some members of their team saying one thing, other members saying oh. another thing, uh, it, and then even sometimes the same members saying something differently in, in a different way to another member of the media and then it kind of made things com- you know, conflict the way that it was reported yeah it's it, I think I think they're afraid of that happening again so they just cut themselves off from that happening again by saying well, not, well we won't do any of these interviews yeah it, it's uh, I don't know like you said it could it could have been the worst thing that they could have done I, I, because... I, I mean I, I hope for for their sake, um, because the the tech that they've got is is fantastic, um, whilst being very intrusive. Um, but I hope you know, hope for their sake that they answer a lot of these unanswered questions uh, to kind of give uh, give a lot more um, consumer confidence. Right. And now they they just kind of took that gateway of get, adding more consumer confidence right off from under themselves. Yes. Yes. I I don't know this this whole next gen thing just seems so weird from both fronts to be honest. Because you you could say all we want about the Xbox One, the PS4 as secure as it is in regards to the used game thing and everything. They've already said we won't inc- we won't encourage DRM, but if publishers do it, then that's their decision. Yes. So that means their console is enabled to do that. Now, there's things like um, EA that have said that they're not doing um, online passes um, for the Xbox One. Now they haven't said anything about not doing them for other consoles, unless of course they are adopting a similar kind of. Um, thing with um loading the information onto their onto their consoles you know and having digital licenses attached to the discs i i think uh ea's online pass thing is all across the board all across the board they are discontinuing online passes and games that are out now that have online passes their passes are being deactivated and the need of an online pass is no longer there so i think it's a general all across the board thing which is what also worries me about the next gen because it could be ea going yeah we we won't have online passes because we don't need them yes we'll be we'll be doing this form instead i i think i think publishers will have a lot more um control Hmm. i have a feeling that they'll have a lot more control over um restricting certain things Right, but and but will that be a good thing or a bad thing? <sighs> Who knows? It's yeah. But but you know what we say is a bad thing now is probably just the norm in the future. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, probably like how um, DLC was in the past. Yeah. People. People. We, we, we'll, we'll we'll sit there and go. Uh, I remember the good old days. <laughs> yep. And now now it's going to be like oh this is this is the norm. Yeah, like on this DLC started becoming a norm. Yeah. So, well, DLC started becoming a norm. Like the DLC structure altogether started becoming a norm. Just um, Japan was very late to adopt it, and yeah. um, as soon as they started getting on board, they were all over it. Um, now they're probably some of the worst uh, worst cases with um, DLC. Yeah. Um, and. I don't, you know, I, I have no objections to DLC, uh, as long as the product I buy initially justifies the price that I pay 
over the counter. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know. The next the next gen is going to be full of lots of surprises, and hopefully we can get some of those answered in the yeah. coming uh, weeks from uh, from this week onward through E3 and even the week after. Yeah. And in regards to other announcements for coming from E3, um, Ed Boon announced today on Twitter that there will be more than four DLC characters in Injustice. Which is cool. Right. The season pass listed four. And we have Lobo, Batgirl, and Scorpion who came out on Tuesday as a, as a guest character for season pass owners. So there's one more DLC character in the season pass that has to be accounted for. But Ed Boon said that because of MK9, where they felt like they left it hanging with DLC that they that they could have done or they could have added, they made it so that they could add more to Injustice. So he said that there will be more DLC characters beyond the initial four, and at E3, the game with the original four DLC characters will be playable. So we'll get the fourth DLC character announcement at E3, and maybe a hint as to the next batch of DLC for Injustice. I mean, I haven't yet picked up um, Injustice. It's, it's, it's one that I, I, I'm you know, meaning to get, but um, I've just I'm just got so much backlog with games right now. I think my next one that I'm actually really looking forward to is The Last of Us. Oh, yeah. Um, so... I don't really know because because the thing with fighting games they kind of to, to really enjoy them they they really need a lot of time spent with them and learning um and I don't know if I have that kind of time right now right right I I had attempted to get um injustice when they had what was called the power hour sale on game uh GameStop Mhm I had attempted to do it but the problem is, is GameStop servers were not built for that. So as soon as the deal went on, the website <laughs> slowed to a crawl. And I was there since uh, since like an hour before the sale. And I put it in the cart. I waited. I waited. I waited. The sale hit. It was nine ninety nine. I hit you and <laughs> you and a million others. Right. And I went <laughs> check out. And nothing. <laughs> this this is when this is when GameStop were really trolling you. They only had five copies in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that that's what I was expecting. They only have like oh five copies or something. But it was kind of like, you know, if you're gonna do that type of sale, please make sure your servers are ready. Yeah. It's... Hey SimCity, if you're gonna release a game. <laughs> <laughs> Please make sure your servers are ready. Basically, it, it goes back to that because the GameStop <laughs> servers were not prepared, and they got hammered on that one. And as soon as it got hammered, it was just, you know, what? Could it's you it's like the um, like when I mean, you guys do it. Um, well, it's, it's really your thing. Uh, those I said Black Black Friday sales when they do those hour those power sales and you know our power sales or whatever they call them um uh, flash sales that's it um <laughs> and trying to look at anything on there and just watching those numbers and certain things just go right down so fast right and is, I, I mean even on amazon even though they have those type of flash sales the amazon flash sales you know you can last in regards to the server because I, I participated in one of those to get a WWE 13 last year. And your Amazon does that. Oh, your Amazon. Our Amazon doesn't. Your Amazon, <laughs> what does it do? Does it go through the same thing, slow down and everything? Uh, no, our Amazon doesn't do flash sales. They, they they might do like a 24-hour sale or something like that. Or you don't... certain items, but that's pretty much it. Oh wow! You don't have like the gold box sales or anything like that. Oh no, no. When when I see when I see um, people tweeting about um, Amazon gold box sales, I am re usually quite jealous because uh, there's a lot of the times things in there that I I would like to get, but 
and it you know they get shown at a very very reasonable price right but no we don't we don't have that i get you okay fair enough we had we had some of those as part of the black friday sales that's when they usually start doing a lot of stuff for like the games mm -hmm. they really start pumping out those type of sales like you know for the next three hours get this game at 60 percent off and go from there yeah steam already kills me when it does that <laughs> i hate steam but i love it at the same time <laughs> love hate love hate relationship over yeah. a provider <laughs> oh. gog does it too because i use um good old games a lot as well and they do the same thing i get these emails and there's like buy this for 80 percent off oh. oh wow okay okay <laughs> i'll do it <laughs> little do you, you know little do you even think that those things are going to be on sale again like not too not not too distant future so yeah but you buy it just in case it's not. <laughs> yeah, just just on the off chance that you might not ever see the deal again. Yes. Like, I bought uh, Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend for, I believe it was $16, $17. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Because it was the collector's edition. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I am never seeing the sale again, most likely. And Did I, you see the sale again? Um, I am not sure. I don't think I have, actually. But then again, you don't pay that much attention. Once you got it, you don't pay that attention anymore, do you? I try not to. Because then I'll be like, why? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, that sale is sale is there again. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's shipped from somewhere else. Amazon has it up for a higher price. Amazon has it up for $32. Another place has it for $12. But that's from a third party, so... Yeah. So yeah, I I kind of got lucky on that one. I usually shop around when I when I buy. Right. I have a dedicated I have a list of dedicated sites that I tend to buy um, hard copy games from, and uh, I usually shop around to find who does the best price. I I I can no longer afford to be loyal. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. only the thing that would have made me break my loyalty to Amazon was that ten dollar injustice sale. Because I'm usually just I usually just stick to Amazon.com for game mm -hmm. shopping, and then all of a sudden, I see. Oh yeah, you, 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 I know you don't ever shop at GameStop. Right, and I almost and I was going to shop at GameStop for that. How filthy would you have felt? I, you know what? I would have I would have felt dirty. I would have dealt with it. <laughs> Bec I, they, they you, 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 you'd, you'd wash yourself in uh, in all the notes that you didn't spend on that game, yeah? Yes. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, well, you, you saved me $50. I'll give you that. <laughs> but, yeah, that... That that was that situation with uh, GameStop. I I almost would have gotten it, but it locked up on the checkout screen for the whole hour. So yeah, as as you said, like millions of others did at the same time too. Yeah. But along the lines of injustice, there will probably be more DLC announcements at E3 for them. Nintendo will be holding their Nintendo Direct conferences for Smash Brothers and Mario Kart and the new Mario games. Um, Capcom teasing a few surprises. EA and Dice are teasing a few surprises at uh, their E3. Although I I am curious how much of a surprise they actually are, and if they're not what everyone expects them to be. Well, they they kind of made um, Battlefield Four to be out like a big surprise when they kind of made that announcement back when they said that there was going to be a beta for it. Yeah. Um, for those who bought the mes uh, Medal of Honor game, that they was gonna get, a, they were gonna get the beta for um, uh, Battlefield Four when they hadn't like officially announced Battlefield Four, but I think everyone knew it was coming. Right. Yeah. And but there's also the notion of a Battlefront Three and a Mirror's Edge Two that are that's intriguing some people. 
the, the Mirror's Edge, the Mirror's Edge Two one is, is is piquing my interest mostly. I I hope we get a Mirror's Edge Two. I really. Hope. I enjoyed the first game. I really enjoyed the first game. Same, same here. It was it was kind of refreshing because it wasn't like totally combat heavy. Yeah. Um, and. And and some of the things that you could do in this first person perspective are things that you couldn't normally do in, in most other games. Right, especially with the whole free running aspect and everything. Yes. Yeah. It was it was just so well done for what it was. A first yeah. person free running game. And I, I personally loved Mirror's Edge One. I would love for them to make a sequel and I would love for it to be multi platform. I hope yes. it's not I hope it's not affected by the EA Microsoft partnership if they have a game partnership too. Yeah. So, yeah, E3's, E3 is shaping up to be interesting on both the rumor front and what could possibly be at E3 in regards to the announcements, to the games, to the trailers, to the next gen of gaming and the official console unveiling of the PS4. So, and we'll, we'll, yeah, I mean, we'll have our next podcast, which is the, literally the week just after um, E3 has been and gone. Right. Unless we wanted to do one at, during E3, um, possibly. Uh, I we'll look into it. Um, we'll try and do it. Say that we'll try and okay. do it. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll try we'll, and get an, another E3, an E3 episode out for you. Yeah. So, um, t- t- with that said, is there any closing remarks you wanted to leave us with, Ryden? Um. Well, yeah. I'm. As I mentioned earlier on the podcast, um, I did buy myself um, an Elgato, and uh, so I've been recording this week, uh, playtesting through Tomb Raider um, Underworld. Um, I will be doing a few more um, other franchises, um, not just Tomb Raider, um, but I want to kind of get these done. So if you wanted to see my movies, they're all up on our YouTube channel. Um, I should hopefully get be getting some exclusives which i can't talk to you about right now um so you can look forward to those and uh i guess when you know when um bet- between myself and justin who's also got a, a game capture um we'll kind of be tossing around with um what we'll be playing and um i, I know justin's covered a lot of the dynasty warriors franchises so i'll probably steer um into other things um maybe try in some uh first few hours of rpgs and things like that it should be interesting all right so some more video game content brought to you by Ryden on the we are gamers youtube channel and hopefully if you're listening to this on the youtube side of things hope that you like the video comment subscribe and you know, follow us along on our Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr pages. Our Twitter at We Are Gamers. Our Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash We Are Gamers. Hope you hope to see you there, and you like our Facebook page. And our Tumblr, Gamers.tumblr.com. So, with all of that said, this has been the We Are Gamers podcast with a pre three uh, mini, uh, you could say, a mini episode thereabouts because that actually... was a that was a rather chunky mini episode <laughs> it's a half hour shorter therefore mini <laughs> but uh, with uh pre- you, 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 you gotta buy the other half as dlc Ooh. <laughs> ouch it's on the disc it's fine <laughs> wow it's 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 on the data yeah it's on the data uh, yeah okay <laughs> But no, it was it was fun. It was fun. Okay. So with all of that said, this has been us over at the We Are Gamers podcast. Signing out. Good night everybody. Until next time. Till next time. <laughs>